Details this noon and a deadly crash investigation. What we now know about the victim coming up. Yes, we do have a chance for some showers and storms tonight, but unfortunately it's not going to be enough to really take us out of our drought situation and higher high fire danger returns tomorrow. We'll look at that forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. It took all night, but firefighters in Windcrest are now convinced that they have finally put out a fire in a home there. They initially were called to the 200 block of Driftwood after midnight. Then they had to go back a few hours later when that fire flared up again. Katrina Weber reports even with all their efforts, the home was heavily destroyed. The task before Windcrest firefighters seemed easy enough quickly knocked down a fire that had damaged only a couple of rooms in a home in the 200 block of drift wind. That was shortly after midnight. They thought it was out, but, uh, you know, just numbers all it takes. Scott Gordon says just as things across the street from his home seemed to get back to normal, fire crews were back again. They left and uh, all of a sudden uh, woke up the lights going off again, you know, the flashing lights. He says this time he also saw flames shooting through the roof. Firefighters say two men who live in the home already had escaped earlier. An arson investigator who was still there noticed the flames coming to life again and called it in. And when the crews returned, they had a much bigger job on their hands. Firefighters say the second time they were called here, they really didn't have much of a chance. They say this house was already opened up due to the first fire, and that allowed the wind to quickly spread those flames throughout the house. I don't know. It was just a crazy night. The double dose of fire caused extensive damage. A firefighter also was left limping. He sprained his ankle while stepping off a curb, then was taken to a hospital to get it checked out. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. What used to be a house on the east side is now nothing but ash after catching fire a little bit before six this morning. Now this fire brings the total of construction site fires on the east side to more than a half dozen in the past three weeks. Sarah Costa takes us to the scene of the latest one at Hackberry Street near Omaha and learns if arson could be a possibility. This abandoned home on the east side taken down by massive flames relatively quickly Tuesday morning. San Antonio Fire Department says by the time they arrived to the house on Omaha and South Hackberry, just after 5.30 this morning, the home had already been completely taken over by the fire. Firefighters had to fight it defensively from above to help get the fire under control and prevent it from spreading even more. The fire spread to the house next door, that home also abandoned. Firefighters say no one was injured or home in both houses, both houses also under construction. The reason for this massive flame, it was fueled by a ruptured gas line. The flame staying lit for several hours because CPS energy crews did not have easy access to the gas valve. Nearly three hours after that fire ignited, CPS energy crews are digging into the road to shut off that gas line. Today's fire is added to the string of fires that have recently sparked on the city's east side. The San Antonio Fire Department has not released an official number, but we have counted at least seven fires in the past three weeks. Some of these fires have occurred in abandoned homes under construction, like today's fire. The San Antonio Fire Department is investigating these fires and says they are not ruling out arson at this time as a possible cause. In the meantime, Lieutenant Jose Munoz says Eastside residents should remain vigilant. And just report any activity that they deem suspicious. So we're... Uh... We're, like I said, all these fires are under investigation at this time. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, we are learning more about a man who died in a crash on the Ford on our side. The Bear, Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified him as 47-year-old Velton Maurice Washington. Police say he was heading north on Highway 281 yesterday when he veered off the road and hit a metal guardrail. The impact sent his vehicle back across five lanes of traffic. And that's when he hit a concrete barrier. It's not clear why he crashed. Also new at noon, Leon Valley police hitting a wall in a murder investigation about a month after a man's death. Still no signs of his killer. Police tell us that 48 year old Shelton Fersner passed away back on February 21st. Officers say they found him with a gunshot wound in the 5600 block of Evers. That's near Vista Del Rey Apartments in Leon Valley. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say that there were reports of a gunshot ringing out earlier in the morning, followed by a man who was yelling. 
If you can provide helpful information in this investigation, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers, the number to call 210-224-STOP. That major fire in Medina County, about 95% contained now. People living in the High Mountain Ranch subdivision will be able to return home and see the damage for themselves. Those flames destroying three homes, scorching trees and leaves. The video here taken off of County Road 271, not too far from the point where that blaze started. Power almost fully restored to the homes in that affected area as of last night. UT Health San Antonio is getting several thousand dollars to help with cancer awareness and research. This comes after Rudy's Barbecue collected over $135,000 and donated the money to UT's MD Anderson Cancer Research Center. Customers at participating restaurants received a $10 voucher if they made a $5 donation. It's going into research, so you know we just remain hopeful. Um, it, it certainly helps the battle against cancer. Because the goal of May's Cancer Center is to change the face of cancer for San Antonians in South Texas. The San Antonio uh, Cancer Council does an awesome deal. They do amazing things for the community. And so, I mean, they helped out families with care and, and support. So, yeah, so we try to do our best to make sure we can. And like I say, this year we did 135000 and we're going to keep on doing it. Next year we plan on doing even more. As you mentioned, the donation part of a pink campaign in collaboration with the SA Cancer Council. Haven for Hope announcing a new effort to help streamline part of their organization so that they can spend more time with their clients. The organization says it is partnering up with an IT company to figure out how technology can help enhancements create enhancements, that is, to improve things like security. One goal is to implement a system that will help them monitor security cameras so that they're going to know when a client may need help, like during a medical emergency. This would free up staff to focus on spending more time with the clients. If we can improve our technology, we can spend more time with our clients. And that's really the goal, is that human interaction and the human touch so that we can provide those services. Haven for Hope says it is still in the beginning stages of this partnership, so some ideas are not quite ready to put into practice. People all over the city gearing up for Fiesta. And although the events are a lot of fun, there's also a purpose to help local nonprofits. We're going to take a look at the impacts Fiesta could have on the community still ahead. And the Spurs are on a pretty nice roll after wrapping up their latest road trip in Houston last night. Highlights on the way. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine, the violence escalating on all fronts, but Ukrainian leaders are saying they have taken back more territory from the Russians. There are also some pretty shocking claims of a suspected poisoning affecting a Russian oligarch and Ukrainian negotiators who are taking part in talks looking to end the war. ABC's Ike Jochi has the latest. Today, a shocking claim of an attempted poisoning. A source telling the Wall Street Journal, two Ukrainians along with Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich suffered symptoms consistent with a chemical poisoning after a meeting in Kiev earlier this month. The men who have since improved consumed only chocolate and water in the hours before the symptoms appeared, which included red eyes, constant and painful tearing, and peeling skin on their faces and hands. Abramovich was clearly feeling well enough to participate in a fresh round of peace talks with Ukraine and Turkey today. After nearly five hours of negotiations in Istanbul, some progress, as the Russians called the discussions constructive, telling reporters military activity near Kiev and Cherniv will be curtailed to increase trust between the sides. For their part, the Ukrainian negotiators say they won't discuss conceding any of their territory to Russia right now, adding that they want to involve other countries in the talks in two weeks to establish security guarantees for Ukraine if it were to come under attack in the future. 
A live webcam over the city of Mykolaiv caught the moment a Russian missile struck a government building. Ukrainian emergency services releasing this video showing the missile flying by. Moments later, smoke from an explosion fills the screen. The Ukrainian government releasing this photo showing the Mykolaiv Regional State Administration building with a massive hole in its center. It comes as Ukraine claims an important victory in the suburbs of Kiev. President Zelensky says Ukrainian forces have retaken the city of Irpin stopping Russia's push to encircle the capital. In this Ukrainian military video, you can see Ukrainian troops driving through Irpin streets. Meanwhile, the international channels are still active. This morning, President Biden holding a call with the leaders of Germany, France, Italy, and the UK to discuss the latest developments in the Russian war on Ukraine. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Look at outside with live cam. Nice day out there. A little cloud cover. Just a little omen of what's to come, Justin. Uh, perhaps a little bit of cloud cover, maybe, maybe a few showers tonight. But really, the, the big story is going to be uh, starting tonight and especially tomorrow is going to be the, the grass fire threat because winds are going to pick up. Dry air is moving back in. Not a great situation. The aquifer is still dropping like a rock, too. It's down half a foot to 652.7. It's been on a steady drop all week long. In your pollen count, Ocus Heights at 990, Molds Moderate 520, Hackberry, Mulberry, Ash, all in the low category. We'll talk about that fire threat tomorrow, how gusty these winds are going to be. That forecast straight ahead. Viva Fiesta! After two years of pandemic obstacles, Fiesta is back this year with all the most popular events. Max Massey sat down with the Fiesta Commission president-elect to discuss the final preparations underway right now and what this party with a purpose really means for the Alamo City's charities and economy. It is just the excitement of getting going again. We have events from Port San Antonio and Palo Alto out to Bernie. Like so much of San Antonio and our surrounding areas, John is excited for Fiesta this year. And with just two days until we start, we are in the final stages of being Fiesta ready. There are thousands of volunteers getting ready. Uh, everything from uh, building booths, organizing ticket sales, just getting everything ready to uh, have a fabulous Fiesta. And it's not just volunteers. We are expecting crowds. Events look like they're going to be full. Uh, Night on San Antonio, Oyster Bay, uh, all the parades, the UTSA events, just everything is going to be full. But what does this mean for our local nonprofits, our local charities? That's the thing about Fiesta. We call it the party with a purpose because that's really what it is. We've got 100 different nonprofit organizations that make most of their money for the year during Fiesta. And when they don't have a Fiesta, they don't make any money. We know Fiesta, but this is not just a San Antonio tradition. People come to the Alamo City from far and wide all to celebrate. This is a $340 million economic impact for the city of San Antonio. That is bigger than the Indianapolis 500 and bigger than the Kentucky Derby. So as we are just 48 hours away, Get ready and get excited. They can expect things to be back to normal and bigger and better than before. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And our meteorologists are getting into the fiesta spirit. Not only are they, you know, keeping an eye on the weather for you, uh, they've got their KSAT Weather Authority medal, and they're handing more of them out today. The giveaway starts this afternoon at Centicos Casablanco, Blanca on the west side. You can it is Casablanca. Casablanca. And you can start lining up at four. Who's going to be there, Justin? Uh, Adam is that Kasky. a surprise? Oh, you gave it away. It's Adam Kasky. Yes, it's Adam Kasky. So yes. you start lining up at four and you get the medal at sometime after that. Six, six-ish. Six, six. Ooh. More or less. Ooh. Yeah, a lot of fun. The medal's pretty cool this year. It's in high demand. Just saying. Always. Yeah, I love that Fiesta is underway. We got a great week this week as Fiesta officially gets started. We also got the Valero uh, open going on. So a lot this week. And what we're concerned about is going to be the risk for some grass fires again tomorrow. I know we've just dealt with so many this last week. Here we go again. I want to show you the wind gusts across the state. We'll start with that. Look at Amarillo gusting to 41 right now. There's going to be some gusts across parts of the Texas Panhandle and Kansas today. Close to 60 miles per hour. Very strong winds, not only here, but 
across the entire state of Texas. We're gusting to 31 right now. And so the fire threat today, not so much here as it is out across West Texas and especially the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma and Kansas. That's where there is an extreme risk for wildfires today. There's already some underway and they're going to spread so rapidly. Tomorrow, though, we get the dry air, we get gustier winds, and now we're in the critical uh, space here for the possibility of some grass fires. So this is something we're going to watch very, very closely tomorrow. We have to be careful. Uh, you know the drill. No cigarette butts out the window. Uh, don't park cars in sort of grassy areas that can start a fire. Sparks, chains on the back of trucks. All those things can contribute to uh, grass fires. So we got to be careful. Forecast wind gusts today. It, it is uh, windy. We've got gusts close to 30 now uh, here around the area. That's a southerly wind, though, southeasterly wind. So we've got a lot of moisture to deal with, too. This is 6 o'clock today. Still same story. I think overnight is when our winds will be strongest. We could see some gusts close to 40 overnight. So if you're putting out the trash can tonight, know that it may blow away if you don't have heavy bags of trash in there. And then by tomorrow morning, maybe a little bit of a break as our system comes through, but then the winds pick right back up tomorrow out of the west and you get that high fire danger that we were talking about. Gusts to 40 potentially. This is around 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then by Wednesday evening, the winds finally die down some. You combine that with the low dew points. Yes, dew points are high today, but by tomorrow, we're falling off into the 30s, into the very dry category, and therein lies the issue. As we go outside for you right now, mostly cloudy skies, 77 at the airport. Dew point is at 61, and we're gusting to 31. Uh, satellite picture shows clouds have, for the most part, cleared. We're still going to see some partly cloudy skies today. Temperatures already up to 79 in Castroville. You're at 83 in Divine, 76 Boulevardy, 78 in New Braunfels, 78 right now in Seguin. And our forecast takes us up to about 82 by 3 p.m., uh, 82 by 7 p.m. We'll probably top out around 85. And then look for uh, mostly cloudy skies tonight. We start to bring in some rain chances around midnight, and then those rain chances pick up even more overnight. We'll fast forward to... Uh, 3 a.m. Broken line of showers starts to develop across the hill country and this thing, uh, this broken line limps into Bear County. Right now we're putting in a 30% chance of rain. Just know that it'll be brief. There could be a few rumbles of thunder. There could be a strong storm, but I think really that's going to be to our north. Just not a lot of good dynamics here to get thunderstorms going. But if you hear a rumble of thunder, don't be surprised. Uh, by 6 a.m., this is starting to push east, and then we clear out by 9 a.m. And by noontime, we've got those gusty winds settling in. Rainfall potential, less than a tenth of an inch. That's it. And that's why this isn't going to really help us all that much. There could be some slightly higher tolls as you go up I-35. Uh, but just not much here. Extended forecast, we're going to go 85 tomorrow with that fire danger. 84 on Thursday, Fiesta officially begins. We have the Valero Texas Open starting on Thursday too. Weather well, looks fairly decent. Winds died down some Thursday and Friday. Some partly cloudy skies Saturday and Sunday. Outside chance of a stray storm out west Sunday. And then our rain chances, storm chances actually pick up a bit on Monday. Right now we have them at 30%. All right, Justin, a lot to watch. Thank you. Yep. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones answering to some player moves. Coming up. Bears trying to get 4 0 on their latest road trip ending last night in Houston. They got some help with the return of Devin Vassell. Spurs with a solid start. DeJounte Murray to Keldon Johnson. Hard at the basket. Shot falls plus foul. San Antonio jumps out to a and hard fall for him. 3 a 10-3 lead. A few minutes later, off the miss, Jakob Pertl tips it in. 17-8 lead. And then Zach Collins back to the basket with a little hook shot. 39-31 after one. Second quarter, Vassell comes up with a rebound and goes right to the rim. Spurs up 13. And on the very next possession, DeJounte drives through contact with the basket. The foul got the one. Spurs up at the half, 67-55. Third quarter, Rockers taking it up court, but the ball bounces off of Zach Collins' foot right to Trey Jones, finishes with the lay-in. Then a few plays later, Josh Richardson's going to lob it up for Collins for the elite oop slam. Nice timeout, Houston. Spurs still in control, 96-84, heading into the fourth. 
Moore Murray with the layup plus the foul for an 11 point lead. He finished with a career high 33 and then Collins finds Keldon Johnson crashing the rim for the dunk. Spurs look like they're in control up 113 102. Six minutes to play. The Rockets aren't done. Josh Christopher makes a catch and shoot three to make it a one point game under 10 seconds of play after Murray hits a pair of free throws. Houston has a chance to force overtime. No! Around and out. Spurs survive 123 120 and sweep the road trip. Whatever we got to do to win, you know, uh, it wasn't easy. We knew it was, uh, it was tough. They were hitting shots. Um, you know, you can tell we're a little bit tired, but, you know, we dug down. Uh, uh, DJ made some big plays, you know, we all contributed and things like that. And uh, whew, we got to win, so that's all that matters. All right, so they've won four in a row, five of their last six. They're back home for a few. They take on the Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow night at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys under Jerry Jones defending his decision to cut ties with starting wide receiver Amari Cooper, who was due to make $20 million for this coming season. And instead, the Cowboys traded Coop to the Cleveland Browns for a fifth round pick and a swap of late round picks. Jones met with reporters while he was at the NFL owners meetings in Florida and defending his decision, saying we made a decision that allocation should be better spent. Cooper now teaming up with Deshaun Watson in Cleveland, but that was not the only player in question. Randy Gregory took off from the Cowboys to the Denver Broncos for the same five year, $70 million contract the Cowboys offered him. The difference? Gregory claims that Jones inserted a last second clause in his contract that would require Gregory to forfeit his bonus and guarantees if he were to be suspended or fined by the NFL. Gregory asked for that one to be taken out. Jones declined, even though it was the Cowboys who revived his career. Jones says he has no regrets that he did for Gregory and wishes him nothing but the best. A discovery found inside a sealed container. It can play a huge role as astronauts get ready to go back to the moon. Why scientists waited 50 years to open the container. And the president has drafted the U.S. federal budget, and it affects your life more than you might think. How it could impact health care initiatives in your community and how the president plans to pay for all the proposals. One stroll down the formula aisle, and you won't find a whole lot these days. When the shelves are stocked, there are likely limits in place, too. This after certain brands were linked to several illnesses and two infant deaths. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at how the formula may have fallen through the cracks and the subsequent investigation into the FDA. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed the Parental Rights in Education Bill, a controversial measure, measure that critics instead are calling the Don't Say Gay Bill. The bill actually bans classroom curricula on sexual orientation or gender identity for kindergartners through third grade, but it does not ban the word gay. It also requires that all sex education be age appropriate for the higher grade levels. Parents could sue their school district if they believe teachers or schools violated the requirements. The bill has stirred up debate and controversy nationwide. Critics allege that the bill will harm LGBTQ plus youth who may be shunned by classmates, putting the mental health and safety of that group at risk. A House committee scheduled to look over President Joe Biden's federal budget plan today. It includes money for health care initiatives and more funding for NASA. It could help put the first woman and person of color on the moon and prepare for human exploration of Mars someday. The president also wants to increase funding to combat the opioid epidemic and fight COVID-19. To pay for it all, Biden wants to raise taxes on those making over $100 million. He wants a minimum 20 percent tax on their income and their capital gains. He also wants to increase the corporate tax from 21 percent to 28 percent. But what items some critics have a problem with, they say the money President Biden wants for defense is not enough. Money spent on health education and care in our country hit a 20-year high in 2020. And part of that reason, COVID-19. As the pandemic began to unfold, national health spending grew nearly 10%, while gross domestic product went down more than 2%. 
That means health care that year took up nearly 20 percent of total spending. The numbers are now from a new study just published in the journal Health Affairs. Once this public health emergency wraps up and we're going to be able to see more stable health trending, rather health spending trends. New research highlights a disturbing trend among the nation's youth. Rates of pre-diabetes among children have more than doubled over a nearly two-year decade span. That according to a study published in the JAMA Pediatrics Journal. The findings were based on data from 12 to 19 year olds and information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Pre-diabetics often have higher than normal blood sugar levels and have a greater risk of health issues like type 2 diabetes, strokes and heart disease. Researchers say they can't pin down why pre-diabetes has increased, adding that it's an issue they need to be looked into further. As new COVID-19 case numbers continue to drop in the U.S., cases of the flu and hospitalizations are now rising, and the increase is coming at an unusual time of the year. So why is flu spreading now? In the U.S., the CDC says flu season typically peaks between December and February. But in many parts of the country, flu activity is now climbing. The flu is not a joke. People still die from the flu. The latest numbers from the CDC show flu cases are rising in most places across the U.S., but are still lower than pre-pandemic seasons. Still, this season, the CDC estimates there have been at least 3.1 million flu cases, 31,000 hospitalizations, and 1,800 deaths. The highest levels of flu recorded right now are in the central and south central regions of the country, where some schools have had to cancel classes due to the surge of cases. This comes after a nearly non-existent flu season last year. The COVID virus is uh, a respiratory virus also. So the measures that have been useful and helpful decreasing transmission of that virus have also played some impact uh, on the influenza virus. Emergency medicine doctor Daniel Bachman with Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center says the rise in cases could be because of those public health measures like masking and social distancing being relaxed. He said it could also be the natural flow of the virus itself and says it's not too late to get a flu shot. You can also help to slow the spread if you if develop you have those symptoms. symptoms, then try to limit your exposure to other people. <coughs> Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. COVID-19 vaccines will be offered to migrants in custody at the southern border. That's according to the Department of Homeland Security. This plan may also be extended to thousands of people who are found to be trying to get into the U.S. The DHS told Congress that it should be able to provide around 2,700 shots daily, and that number will more than double before the end of May. Sources say some members of the Biden administration were not in favor of providing vaccines to migrants, saying it could encourage more migrants to try to enter the country. Live look outside with live cam. Seems like it's going to be one of those days where we just get ready for a little storm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of cloudy, humid. Feels like we may see some storms later. I got to tell you, though, the chances of seeing rain tonight, I mean, they are there, but I just don't know we're going to see all that much. It's probably going to be why most of us are sleeping and it will be out of here by tomorrow morning's commute. Here's what to expect today and tomorrow. So today, lots of clouds, gusts to 35 miles per hour. Those are southerly winds bringing in quite a bit of moisture today. Broken line of showers and storms tonight. Right now we have the rain chances pegged at about a 30% shot. There could be a few rumbles of thunder, but we're not looking for a lot of severe weather or anything like that. And then windy tomorrow, high fire danger, and that's probably the biggest takeaway here from our forecast. Gusty west winds tomorrow, dry air, that's going to raise that a threat for grass fires, especially tomorrow afternoon. Here's our storm system. It's approaching from the west. You can kind of see the spin here under water vapor that is pushing towards the plains. And this will create severe weather to our north, just not so much down here. And then by tomorrow, we'll be on the back side of it with those gusty winds. And parts of the southeast will really be under the gun for severe weather. Um, across parts of Mississippi and Alabama, a lot of severe weather expected tomorrow. For us, gusty winds right now. We're seeing gusts to 31 at the airport, 35 in New Braunfels, seeing gusts to 30 in Hondo. And our forecast today, well, it takes us up to about 85 by this uh, by 5 o'clock. And then tonight, we'll see the drier air start to spread in by the 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And that 
brings temperatures down into the low 60s. We'll talk more about those rain chances and we'll look ahead to the rest of the week, plus some additional rain chances next week coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. Researchers opening up a container that was sealed 50 years ago. What's inside that could be critical to future moon missions? A look at the discovery made here in Texas still ahead. And with rising fuel prices, airline costs are taken off. But there are ways to bring those costs down. And some of the most popular tips can be found on TikTok. A look at the savings coming up. No matter which web browser you use, it's likely you're going to need an update soon. Why an issue with Google software could have widespread effects. Google says its Chrome browser may leave users especially vulnerable to hackers. And the issue could exist on other web browsers, too, since several companies use Google's open source code in order to run. Google's first announcing this dangerous vulnerability in its Chrome browser last week. Google's still working on a fix, but it could take several days to roll out. Microsoft says the same hole exists in its Edge browser, which uses code generated by Google. But they issued a patch for the Edge users. Astronauts at the International Space Station getting ready for a special treat, a meal that was made by a celebrity chef. Jose Andres is preparing a special version of his signature paella to send to space. The chef had to make some changes to the dish so that it could fill the strict nutritional requirements set by NASA. The meals are set to be delivered to the space station next month. That paella is going to ride alongside the first mission to ISS that's going to have an entirely private crew. And this month, researchers at the Johnson Space Center in Houston opened one of the last Apollo containers 50 years after the sample inside the container was collected. On the inside, they found gases that could actually play a huge role as astronauts are getting ready to go back to the moon. They're going to be able to get new samples when they go back and then compare them to the ones they already have in order to learn more about our moon. It helps us understand what is from the moon and what is from the outside and how the moon really formed. NASA waited 50 years to open the container because technology was still being developed in order to determine what gases were inside. People are looking for savings anywhere they can find them, and now they are turning to TikTok. A growing trend has people posting videos on the platform with money-saving tips, especially when it comes to traveling. A travel advisor's account is gaining popularity. She posts travel hacks she picked while she was a flight attendant. So how can you save when planning your next trip? According to Kayla Marbury, try to be flexible. Some dates are cheaper to travel on than others and take a look at package deals to sift out cheaper flights without booking the hotel. If you click package deals and you go on and if you're only just looking for a flight, just minimize the amount of time you're staying in a hotel because you actually won't be staying there anyway. Uh, that'll drop the flights in by so much. Another tip, take a look at your credit card perks. Some can offer thousands of points when you're booking your travel. Ooh, good tips right there. Those credit cards that come in handy every now and then with the points, huh? Yep, it's true. You can uh, use them. Use them. Eh? You may want to use them uh, the next couple days. The weather won't, uh, won't be too, too bad. We're not expecting flight delays or anything like that. We do have some chances of storms coming up tonight and then some gusty winds uh, tomorrow. And that really, again, is the big story. 77 so far today, 66 the low. This morning, records are 94 and 35, set back in 2000 and 1987. We'll talk about some of the climatology and how dry it has been to start 2022. It's coming up. This day in Fiesta history is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The idea for the first river parade started with a newly developed river walk and a trip to Mexico City. After witnessing the floating gardens of Xochimilco, a group of Texas Cavaliers decided to bring this colorful concept back to San Antonio. A dozen barges were decorated, and in 1941, the first Texas Cavaliers River Parade was held. It happened right on the brand new Riverwalk. 
Today, hundreds of thousands of people visit from all over the country to witness this truly unique celebration. With more than 40 festive, decorated floats, it's become a must-see fiesta event, with proceeds benefiting the Texas Cavaliers Charitable Foundation. Over the years, that has meant more than $8 million for local children's charities. And you're going to be doing that. A little over a week away. I know. Myra, myself, will be there. Fiesta, Fiesta Thursday. Yep. We're out. We're all going to be outside. So Justin, we're yeah. like, come on, man. Yeah, I remember seeing David last year. He was uh, a little hot. A little yeah, warm, a little yeah. Day, yeah. There was a little sweating going on. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of circulation down there <laughs> on the river. Uh, we're hoping for some slightly cooler temperatures as we get into Fiesta. Although I'll tell you, the latest forecast has us in the 80s. Uh, as we head into the weekend. Uh, we've also got to talk about the lack of rainfall. It's just been just a bad situation. There's no other way to put it here on South Texas. Uh, this March, we've only picked up a quarter of an inch of rain. That's about 1.84 inches below average. And since October 28th, we've only picked up about four and a half inches. That's not near enough. And you look at the month, I haven't put anything down for the 30th because there is a chance we could see some showers early tomorrow morning. That'll be our one chance to add to our March total because we know Thursday will be dry. We'll see where we end up, but if uh, you're looking at this comparatively, you have to go back to 2011. Uh, the, that would be the last time we were this dry. Uh, we picked up only a hundredth of an inch back then, but th this would also rank as the 14th driest March all time. Just to give you some perspective. Uh, we uh, we need the weather pattern to change a little bit and there's no indication that it will as we look at the fire risk today we showed this earlier so dry out west not only that to get in some very very gusty winds across the texas panhandle parts of oklahoma and kansas extreme fire risk there today there could be some significant wildfires and then as we get into tomorrow that spreads south we get gusty winds here dry air boom critical fire risk tomorrow we've got to be careful uh, just like the last uh, last weekend where we had those fires, same situation. Any kind of spark can set off a fire that will spread very, very quickly, especially with the winds that we're expecting. As we get into tonight, we're forecasting wind gusts to be close to 40 miles per hour, but it doesn't end there. By the time we get into tomorrow, we're still going to see gusts around 40 miles per hour, but this time out of the west, which, as you know, is a dry wind. And uh, there you have uh, the issues, and that's why we're a little concerned for tomorrow. Uh, those winds will die down by Wednesday evening, by the way. Right now, 77 degrees at the airport, mostly cloudy skies. Southerly winds at 21, gusting the 31. Cloud cover has thinned out a little bit. We are seeing some sun, thicker clouds out west. Temperature wise, uh, right now we're sitting at 77 in Holotus, 82 already at Stinson, 82 Pleasanton, 71 Canyon Lake, 77 up there in Comfort. Most of us, actually all of us, will be in the 80s a little bit later this afternoon. I think 85 here in San Antonio, you'll get some warmer numbers as you get down towards Pearsall and Carrizo Springs. And then tonight, in the 60s for the most part, uh, upper 60s until the, our front comes through, then we get that drier air and temperatures fall off a little bit more, maybe some low 60s by the time you head off to work and school tomorrow. Uh, the dew point forecast, it is gonna be humid today, but those dew points fall off sharply once that uh, front comes through or that dry line comes through, and then we get the very dry air coming up tomorrow. Just another factor and why we're uh, concerned about tomorrow afternoon. Let's time out the rain for you. So uh, quite a bit of cloud cover today. And then as we get into tonight, this is around 3 a.m. We start to see a broken line of showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms develop. This will work towards San Antonio by about 5 a.m. Right now, a 30 percent chance of rain, but don't expect much rain out of this. There could be a few areas where we see some lightning and thunder. Could even see a strong storm or two north of here. But I think for the most part here across Bear County, it's a broken line and we're talking less than a tenth of an inch of rain. By 6 a.m., this is moving east, then we clear out, gusty winds kick in, and we're seeing sunny skies for the rest of your Wednesday. There's that rainfall potential, and it's kind of hard to see the difference there, but that darker green, that's less than a tenth of an inch. You go north, generally speaking, you, you may see a little bit more, maybe up to two tenths of an inch up around the Austin area, but this is not near enough to help us with our drought situation. Fire danger tomorrow, 85 on your Wednesday, 84 Thursday as Fiesta officially begins. We also mentioned the Valero Texas Open gets underway Thursday. Looks like pretty good weather for that. The winds will die down Thursday and Friday. We get humidity back uh, somewhat Saturday and Sunday. And then late on Sunday, maybe a stray storm. And then I think Monday we'll have a little better chance at uh, seeing some isolated showers and storms. We'll be right back.
All right, we're all talking Fiesta. Yep. We're ready. You know, yep. oh, see, there they are. Oh, we're playing games. Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> it's right. time for games. <laughs> you do. Game, games to you, as a matter of fact. Mike Moody from Games to You is here. And let me say, if this is a... Uh, you know, dodgeball mm -hmm. ring. I mean, it's like sitting ducks in here. What's going on? No, this is a gaga pit. This is a dexterity, fun, fast game where you actually try to bounce the ball off their, uh, the other opponent's legs. Okay. And you get 20 or 30 kids in here. We'll have this set up. And out. I'm out. She You're just out. got me. Oh, well, wow. He's out. All right. We'll be at Alamo Heights tonight, and this will be out on the field. So okay. much fun. And a lot of other games all set up on the uh, field out there <laughs> at University of the Incarnate. We're going to tell you all about that. And Jen is under the sea. Hey there, Jen. Yes, literally under the sea here at Sea Life San Antonio at the shops at River Center. Super excited. We're going to introduce you to their new sea turtle, Guacamole. I saw her somewhere swimming. We're going to feed her. Plus, they have a huge announcement, something extra special coming that's fantastic. That's a hint, okay? So that's coming up. We'll tell you the big news. Back to you guys. Speaking of big news, today's the day we are going to reveal our Fiesta medal. Ooh. We can tell you that the ribbon is orange. <laughs> You gotta wait a little bit. I think it's the coolest one we've ever this had. This is definitely the coolest <laughs> one we have ever had. And speaking of things that are really cool and sweet. Oh, yeah. Sugar Mama, Stacy Treats here. Krista Franklin joins us. And this is a great way to have, I mean, several different flavors in one cake, right? Yes. Can have, we have six or seven that we brought you today. So All, all in cupcakes in, yep. that make a great cake. And... Something really special for us coming up as well. Speaking of Fiesta, what are you looking forward to the most? Yes, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll air some of those ideas a little later in the show. And if you've got pictures, share those as well. Which one should I eat first? Chocolate. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. You always eat the display. Eat it. I know. Come on. Take it. Welcome back. It's uh, already up to 80 degrees, so mm -hmm. we're looking for 84 this afternoon. 30% chance. Um, some showers and storms overnight tonight uh, into early tomorrow morning. Again, not much rain and then gusty winds kick in tomorrow. Really, winds are going to be the biggest story over the next uh, couple days here before the winds die down later this week. And uh, Fiesta gets underway with some not so bad weather, guys. Thank you, Justin. I don't know what it was about those cupcakes, but those, <laughs> those things you look know, really good. Anytime they put food on SA Live. Yeah. You, you have this reaction. You do know yeah. that, right? Yeah. But, Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> but those cupcakes Old are like... Chili, cupcake, donut, churro. <laughs> He's hungry now. at this hour, right now. <laughs> Poor David. Hey, today on SA Live, we meet Sea Life San Antonio Aquarium's new sea turtle and share some big news about its upcoming project that kids are gonna love. Plus, we get a preview of the fun and games happening at Alamo Heights Night this Friday. And we do our SA Live Fiesta Metal Reveal in a very sweet way thanks to Sugar Mama's Tasty Treats. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. All right, hello and happy Tuesday. Fiesta begins in only two days, and we are already having some fun here. That's going to be going on Friday night. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza, and we will be hosting, of course, Fiesta Fiesta. Yep, Thursday which night. Is, yes, which is this Thursday, and that is the official kickoff to this year's Fiesta event, so don't miss us all out there. You know, we look forward to seeing everybody. And when I finally get the email with the script in it that we just got today, <laughs> we know it's on, so it is gonna be fantastic. There are so many things going on yes. here. And of course, the fun begins then all the way through the rest of the week. Yes, we are getting our own party started today with some help from Mick. Mike. Moody, <laughs> games to you. How are you, sir? All right. He's going to walk us through some of the, these family fun activities you can find at Alamo Heights Night this Friday night, which is a huge event. Good afternoon, as well as Lindsay is in here. All right. So we're what, in the ring. There what's are four going on of us here? in here, Mike. How many are going to come out? So well, <laughs> dodgeball. <laughs> Not, oh, not, dodge, not dodgeball, oh, not Gaga, whatever, Lady Gaga. This is a Gaga pit. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's a dexterity game where you're tapping a ball, trying to hit it off the leg below the knee, foot of your opponent. You pick it up, you're out. You hit it too hard, you're out. You kick it, this, you're out. You kick it, you're out. This is just one of many activities we're going to have over at uh, Incarnate Word on the football field. We're going to fill it up with inflatables, and we're going to fill it up with all sorts of fun things to do for the family. 5.30 to 11.30. 
34th annual. Oh, someone's out. So is the ball. Lost ball. There it goes. Now, now, if he hit that ball out, even though it was off me, is he out? Of if course he gets he too aggressive and hits it out, he's out. So there goes Mike. Uh, he's, <laughs> well, Mike, go long, Mike, goes. go long. Throw it, throw it, Mike. We'll get it back in. Oh, oh back no. in. A, little, a little short. And we're back in. Okay. All so, right. And you said you put like 30 little yeah. kids in here and stuff, right? We can put a bunch of kids in here. We're going to have the football stadium filled up with the larger inflatables that you're familiar with, the rock wall video gaming theater. So something for everyone. It's secure. Parents can go invite their kids in there and then go have fun at the dozens and dozens of food vendors. Everything that you want for yeah. Fiesta. Do they have funnel cakes? They do have funnel ah. cakes. Ah, they have, they have uh, what is turkey on a stick. They have all, everything. everything. Three performance stages, 530 to 1130. Uh, at the Elmo Heights Rotary Club has been doing this for 34 years, benefits some great charities. So military are free, kids under 12 are free, park and rides on their website and Facebook page. And I remember when it started years and years ago over there by the, uh, the Elmo Heights pool. The pool. And then, yeah, it, it moved to a kind of word, became an official Fiesta event. And with you there, I mean, this is just a blast. We've been doing this for about 10 years, and we got involved, and they had just moved from the pool, and then they, they didn't know what to do with this big stadium. I go, let me fill up the stadium. We can fill up the stadium with a bunch of fun stuff. So we did, and uh, we're there until almost midnight on Friday. Yeah. She's and, out. And the nice thing about this game, too, is it's it doesn't matter your size, your strength, anything like that, because you got to be down like Taller, this, right? stronger, usually lose. The more dexterity and the, the, the more yeah. nimble you are, uh, girls can be boys, the, young, the, li the little ones can beat the big ones. If you're a tall person and you're not very nimble, you're going to lose. Oh! You're out. Okay, next game. Okay. Next game. Let's get a laser tag. Sorry, going over here at laser tag. <laughs> oh, and if we play dodgeball, it'd be like that? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So this, this is a really cool laser what? tag. So laser tag, this is a this is a posted stamp of here you go, ma'am. Okay. This is a right. posted stamp sample of what laser tag is. These things will shoot over two football fields in length. Really? They're infrared, so so I, I could kill you, I just killed you. Uh -huh. We are taking lives out. The, the the object of this is not to die. When okay. this goes to zero, you're dead. Okay. Okay. So We'll have this out on the end zone in the football field, and we'll have a bunch of these bunkers out, and we're running, and we're shooting, and we're playing, and we're hiding, and we're stalking, and, and we'll see how many lives you have. Someone's going to die. Someone's dying right and, now. And what's cool is when it dies, it'll oh, are scream. We just, are we just going to? Yeah, let's kill Mike. Let's kill Mike. Oh, there we go. Listen to that. <laughs> oh, you hear little, the little gun cried, Mike. Your little gun cried. So oh when, you, when that happens, that, it, it, there's a purpose to that because otherwise kids would be out there for two hours doing this. Right. When you die, you must go back to the command post, check your gun in, get another gun, or wait back in line because we have kids lined up for hours doing this. And you can put as many different, as many lives on here as, as many you want lives to, as we want. long you want the game to go. Correct. All right, Alba Heights night come up this Friday, but, I mean, if you have uh, a church group, uh, a company, you know, fundraiser team building, fundraisers like that. For schools, we do schools, corporate uh, team building. We, we, we go anywhere, anytime. It can be as small as a birthday party in your backyard to fill up a football stadium. And with, of course, the warmer weather and summer ahead, you have incredible stuff. We have big well, people right? stuff, and you guys sampled last summer. We got a lot of water fun stuff too as it gets hotter with water slides and foam pits and water balloon launchers that you ex both experienced. Oh, yes. The water, <laughs> I, that was my favorite thing because I remember my water balloon slingshot when I had, I had years ago. So that was always a blast too. So. And the human hamster balls oh, were yes. a lot of fun. They will be at Alamo Heights night. We have a special track. <laughs> they we, will. Have a, we have a drag track. It's an inflatable drag track where you're racing side by side like drag race. The thing we did that one time out there at, at, at Central Catholic. At Central Correct. Catholic. Across yeah, the so station. Again, the entire football field down there, which is great. Parking for Alamo Heights night is right across the street. You said shuttle buses as yes, well. Yes, they'll shuttle with their free shuttle buses. It's all on their website. Facebook page, so you don't even have to worry about parking. Get on, uh, get on their page, see where you can go catch a bus, come get over and get a, a free of, ride. A lot of fun, but all for good cause too. It is. Or they raise good causes. They raise, they raise uh, well over a million dollars every year doing this. Woohoo! Of course, how did games you get started? We started this way back in 2009, and we were an event company. We we have been a production company, an event company. We said, hold on a second, let's pivot a little bit here. And we want to stay in San Antonio and not travel so much, so we, we service San Antonio and surrounding areas and we'll do a thousand events a year on a, on a, on a busy year. Wow. All right, what's your favorite uh, blow-up inflatable game that you have? 
Uh, the bungee run joust pit combo that will be at Alamo Heights tonight on the field is kind of fun because you can run with the vests on and go flying backwards and tumble. Or if you need to get those aggression out on someone that you've come with, you can get a, 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 a pugil stick and start pounding them with it safely uh, on the podium of the joust. Right. You're on a stream so, for this show with me, so <laughs> something so you to do. Want how do they do that? Games2u.com or the short the short versions G2U.com or 545 Game G A M E. Mike, right. thank you mm -hmm. very much. It's gonna be a, a, a lot of fun out there. Alamo Heights Night, of course, coming up this Friday night. All and right. for more information on Alamo Heights Night and Games to You, just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the ad scene on SA Live tab where we provided a link or just snap that QR code on your screen. You know, a lot of people are just kind of mm -hmm. taken aback by the fact that Fiesta's kind of early this year as far as where Easter falls, but it's here. It's starting Thursday night, and the question is, what are you looking forward to the most? Oh, the Fiesta Fiesta event yeah. because you and I get to host it, and because of the fireworks at the end of the night and the energy of the crowd. It's just... It's so much fun. Yeah, that's going to be broadcast starting at 8 o'clock, but we're going to be there about 5 o'clock, and it's so great because, you know, the street is going to be filled with people, and everybody's just having a great, great time out there. So let us know what's your favorite thing you're looking forward to the most. At SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll share some of those. And if you have pictures even from previous events, share those too. We'd love to see them. All right, it's not necessarily Fiesta, but uh, Jen Tobias Trusky decided to hit the high seas and set sail <laughs> for Sea Life San Antonio Aquarium to meet the latest animal edition. And I hear this shelled friend has a special name and story. Hey there, Jen. Yes, yes, definitely. If you're looking for something fun to do with the entire family, this is the place to be. We're at Sea Life San Antonio at the shops at River Center with a very special friend. I'm gonna just turn it over to guacamole. Nick Ireland is one of the curators here at Sea Life Aquarium. And uh, tell us all about guacamole, cause she's adorable, first Absolutely. of all. Absolutely, <laughs> so guacamole is a name that we chose for her after a, a naming contest. We had over 100 submissions. And we like the, the fact that it, uh, not only is the animal a green sea turtle, just like guacamole, but green and beloved in San Antonio, guacamole seemed like the perfect name for her. <laughs> but she is an endangered species, a green sea turtle, uh, native to the Gulf of Mexico, and ours was actually rescued here in Texas. It is not releasable into the natural environment anymore, so we uh, offer her a permanent home here with us at Sea Life. And you mentioned just recently, right before spring break, you put her on full display. Now she obviously has an injury, so I was asking you earlier because she stays close to kind of the top of the water, but there's a reason for that, right? That's right. Um, so this turtle was rescued as part of a cold stunning turtle rescue, uh, which is the most common reason for turtle rescues in the state of Texas. During the winter months in the shallow water of the uh, Laguna Madre, they oftentimes go into a state of shock if the water gets cold, about 50 degrees or so. So this one was part of a rescue in 2014. After rehabilitating her from that cold, stunning event, she recovered very nicely, but it was discovered that she had been struck by a boat causing an injury to her carapace. That's the part we would call the shell. Mm -hmm. uh, fancy scientific name is the carapace <laughs> though. Her carapace had a crack in it from a boat strike and as a result, uh, that causes a, a gas bubble to form that can't be released. It stays inside of her. So that actually makes her float a little bit. Uh, the scientific term, of course, is uh, bubble butt. That's what you call <laughs> it in a sea turtle. Uh, she does really well otherwise, but uh, would not be able to survive well on her own in the wild because she is kind of uh, oriented to the surface at all times with her back end floating. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned she's Roughly new, but um, also, this is this the only sea turtle you have here? This is the only sea turtle we have, at least for now. Uh, could possibly consider bringing in and housing some yeah. other rescued sea turtles in the future. Um, but for now, she's our only turtle here. We're, we're super proud and excited to have her here with us. And quite the personality. You mentioned the difference between the contrast for the fish and then sea turtles, right? <laughs> yeah, fish uh, are, I, I mean, I love fish. Fish are super cool. They do tend to kind of uh, key in on certain things, which like right now they're about to be fed, so they're all rushing up here. <laughs> but it still doesn't compare to the inquisitive nature of a sea turtle. They really love to just explore their environment. They're super curious, always wanting to see kind of what's going on. What's this over here? Is it food? Is it something just interest, interesting to see? Uh, so their inquisitive nature makes her a really unique creature for us here at Sea Life. 
Beautiful. She's so beautiful. So, and then for people that are going to come out here, what else is there to discover here at Sea Life? Uh, we have a lot. So we have 20 aquariums here. This is the largest one we have here. It's our 155,000 gallon ocean tunnel exhibit that occupies two floors with a 50 foot tunnel going through it and lots and lots of reef fish. Uh, we also have animals from nearby. Some of the fish that you could see or maybe not see them, but they're there <laughs> in the uh, Riverwalk area. Yeah. So native to the San Antonio River and other Texas rivers. We have uh, jellyfish, we have uh, sea anemones and sea stars and uh, sea urchins that you can touch and interact with in our rock pool. Uh, and we have uh, in total 20 different aquarium displays of animals from all around the world. I love Most of them are uh, tropical fish that you would find in places like Florida and the Bahamas, as well as Australia and Indonesia. Very nice, yes, and I love the interactive um, elements as well. I know my kiddos love that, but when we come back out here, you guys have a big announcement that we, well, I don't know if there's a hint we can give about what's coming, but. Hmm. <laughs> It'll be in this exhibit. Okay, <laughs> yes, hit. and the kids will be really excited <laughs> gonna be about great. it. Back to you, Mike and Fiona. That's <laughs> very cool. What? And I love the name, guacamole. Guacamole. How, you, it can't get cuter than that. <laughs> All right, for more information on Sea Life San Antonio Aquarium, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. And I think something about mermaids coming up a little bit later on. Hey, but stick around because we are gonna reveal this year's SA Live Fiesta Medal and something really sweet to go along with it. Plus, we check out the soccer scene here in SA and see what the Athenians have in store this season. Oh, they got 